All right, so welcome everyone to the live webinar. Uh, today's webinar is solely uh, on why email marketing is essential for government agencies. I think a lot of content today that we're gonna share is going to be relevant for uh, even small business owners and uh, anyone in the marketing field, some questions to think about. And if you have any questions for us, uh, do drop it in the comments. And if you're joining us on Zoom, do drop it in the chat as well. All right, so um, we'll get started. Um, welcome, and if you have any questions about email marketing, do uh, drop it in uh, both the Facebook Live or uh, the Zoom chat if you're here with us, all right? So uh, just a um, quick introduction on myself. I'm Charmaine, and I am a Chief Digital Marketing Officer at Sky Digital Agency, and we do a lot of uh, consultancy and also retainer projects uh, and training as well. Right. So one of the key things is that um, we want to uh, help you to understand why uh, email marketing is not only important, but what are some of the common mistakes. All right. So if you're joining in live or even after the Facebook Live has ended, uh, do feel free to drop your questions as well. And um, uh, myself or Aventus team will actually try to address them as much as possible. Okay. Another thing is... Um, Today, we are actually going to share with you and also let you know, update you on uh, some of the course runs that we have upcoming for email marketing and some of the other subjects that I teach at uh, Aventus. All right, so pre-COVID, we had face-to-face -face classes, but ever since COVID, our classes are virtual. All right, so right now, I'm actually going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to share. So as I mentioned to you earlier, what are some common mistakes? I'm going to share uh, what are some internal and external communications. At any part of time, if uh, we see that you have some questions, we will try to take them as much as we can. Otherwise, we'll take it at the end of the webinar. All right. So and um, why you should consider a digital marketing sales funnel. I do have a video to share with you towards the end of the webinar today, something for you to consider and how you can use email marketing. Uh, some Q&A with uh, you as well. So for those of you who are joining in, um, do join us for Q&A. As you stand, stay towards the back, I would be able to take your questions today, okay? So um, right now, I'd like to explore these questions with you, okay? How do you currently use email marketing? What are some uh, ways that you're sending your emails, whether it's for internal or external communications, All right? So you can share with me in the comments, share with me uh, in the Zoom chat. What are some ways that uh, you're currently using email marketing? I think another question to really ask yourself is uh, what are some ways that you're collecting your emails? This is actually quite important. A uh, reason because when you actually buy emails, I do have a lot of participants and clients who buy emails. I do not recommend you to buy emails. Um, firstly, PDPA concerns. Uh, we're not supposed to sell our uh, email contacts. Uh, these are things that um, if you have questions about, feel free to drop them in the comments. We would love to help you out. Love to take those questions as well. But we are not. We are supposed to use the details, data collected uh, as um, as the purpose that we collected it for. So if I today, because of this webinar, we have gotten ourselves uh, fifty emails, one hundred emails. Um, by right, uh, we can only use to communicate uh, to you uh, what Aventus offers. Okay, so Aventus. Um, by right, uh, will not be able to share this email safe with another entity that they are partnering with. Let's say, um, for example, uh, if any company were to uh, collaborate with a co-working space, uh, that would not be um, uh, allowed. But what they can do is that they can share with you that they are collaborating with this co-working space, but they cannot share the entire database with the co-working space for the blast, whether uh, they benefit uh, monetarily or not uh, is against the PDPA, all right? So I have some points here. Most of us, we use uh, email marketing to spread the word, maybe a new program, a new initiative, uh, some of the events are coming up or, uh, you know, trying to get registrations for some uh, upcoming events that you're organizing. We send an email blast out and making an announcement maybe. Right. If you have other interesting ways that I've not listed them out, do drop them in the comments so that I can actually um, hear from you as well. All right. So typically, most of us use email marketing this way. And I'm going to address uh, why this is an issue. 
okay, or why uh, this is actually not recommended. Partly there are three things why email marketing is important. Uh, it helps people to get to know us. So this is only possible when we share um, about our industry knowledge, what we know, uh, maybe when we share about what we value, um, some of our thoughts um, towards certain topics, like for myself, I share quite often uh, what I think and uh, about social media, digital marketing, ROI and social media, right? Uh, the, my newest video on uh, my Instagram. Secondly, email marketing can also be used to help people to like you, to prefer you, right? And I think Aventus does email marketing quite well um, for majority of the, in fact, most, if not all, the runs I've conducted uh, with Aventus, um, all participants say that it's because they receive their emails. And I think one of the key things to understand is, yeah, sure, people can receive your email, but will they take action? Will they sign up with you? Will they sign up for your courses, right? And then these are things that we need to consider when we send out emails. Uh, how can we build that trust? Uh, one of the things that I think they, they do as well, including their emails, if you have received their emails, let me know in the comments, is that they actually added testimonials into the uh, course uh, uh, email blast uh, details or schedules out, right? So that, um, you know, and they always ask the trainer for some uh, testimonials, I think about three. Many, a uh, few years back, I think uh, they asked me for three testimonials and they added it into the website and also the email blast. Okay, so these are some things, right, to, um, at any point of time, if you're not seeing my screen, do let me know. Uh, so, okay, this, what are some common mistakes then? All right, so I listed out some. First is that we are sending email campaigns out from our local Outlook. Okay, why is this a mistake? Okay, if you, if you would like to take a guess, uh, drop a comment below, um, let me know in the chat, or let me know in a Facebook Live. But one of the key things about... Um, sending email out from your local Outlook is that you are depending on your own email servers. When you do that, I have a lot of um, schools, um, government agencies I know that do that. And when you do that, that's when your emails get stuck. Uh, you affect your colleagues' emails, you affect your entire organization's emails because typically each server including Gmail, only allows you to send 70 to about 100 emails per hour, per hour, right? If you have your own servers, the threshold might have been higher, but just think about it. If the threshold was 100 emails per hour and your database is like 1,000, that would take the server 10 hours to send the emails out, which means that if you send out the email at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., for the next 10 hours, nobody can send or receive any emails because the emails have to be queued after your emails. So it's queued behind your emails. And when that happens, um, I, I realize this a lot, uh, especially when I'm emailing schools, um, MOE teachers who inquire for our workshops, they actually can't receive our emails to the next day, right? Or um, someone actually, uh, you know, sent an email out and they notified me, but I did not receive it to the day. Right? So these are some things to consider. And one of the things to understand about um, sending through email outlook is not only that you're jamming up your entire uh, email uh, queue, but secondly, you do not have something called reports. Okay? You do not have something called reports. And in this report, why is it so important? Because reports tell us uh, many things, the health of our email marketing. Um, it tells us that, okay, you have 1,000 emails. How many people are opening your emails? What time did they open your emails, right? I, I, I do notice certain trends. Sometimes when I send an email out at, say, 9 or 10 a.m., I do see that majority of the opens are at 11 a.m. So then maybe I want to try to send my next email at 11 a.m. instead, right? So these are insights and reports that Microsoft Outlook, your local uh, email outlook does not provide you. Okay, so that's the um, thing about the uh, Microsoft Outlook uh, that I do not recommend. Partly you're jamming up the entire email server. The second thing would be that you do not know how you're doing in your email marketing. Um, you do not know how many people open. You don't know how many people click on your emails. 
And there is no way for you to resend your email campaigns to people who did not open. There's no way for you to do uh, something called uh, improvement and resend it to people who did not click, right? So that we call this segmentations uh, within the email uh, marketing platform. So if you're wondering what kind of email marketing platforms you can consider, there are three that I typically talk about, MailChimp, MailerLite, and HubSpot email marketing. Um, all three, all three uh, require you to have a business email. So if you have a Gmail, um, you will not be able to uh, have the full features, especially MailChimp and HubSpot. But uh, the key thing here is that with business emails, when we are doing business or even if you're a solopreneur, I highly encourage you to at least get a domain name and a email so that you look more professional and we're not just using Gmail to liars. Okay, so company emails, if you buy a .com, .com is only $20 a year. Uh, hosting can be as cheap uh, $60 a year where it allows you to host uh, both your emails and websites, okay? So a lot of times people like to go for GoDaddy. Just understand that although it is cheaper, majority of the plans only allow you to host your emails. So if you want to host your website, you have to pay an additional fee. So it all adds up to about $60 a year, okay? So $60 divided by 12 is about $5 a month, okay? So that's um, common mistake number one. Common mistake number two, Common mistake number two is not having an email marketing strategy. Whether you're a business owner or you are in the government uh, industry, uh, there is a strategy that you can have within your business, right? When we talk about email marketing, it is digital marketing and it is a form of um, digital transformation for you and your business in terms of how you communicate with your um, potential customers or existing customers, right? How are you going to tell them? How are you going to nurture them um, to buying from you or to buy again from you, right? So these are some things to consider. What is an email marketing strategy? I'll give you a very quick example. Uh, email marketing strategy is actually to um, understand how you're going to collect your emails, um, how you can send them a sequence of email to help people, to help your potential customers and existing customers, not only to know you, like you, and trust you, uh, but they enjoy receiving your emails and um, they do even feel that it is important for them to share this email with other people, all right? So an email marketing strategy will give you that, all right? There are many other things uh, in an email marketing strategy, but these are just some uh, overarching uh, principles. Number three, not leveraging on email marketing tool reports and insights. Okay, so one of the key things is um, what I just mentioned earlier, which is when we talk about email marketing, um, you know, sending by Outlook, you do not know how many people, okay, you do not know how many people are actually opening up your emails. You don't know how many of them clicked. Um, you don't know or you are unable to send resend these emails to people who did not open. So I give you a very quick example. If I send emails to 1,000 people and in this 1,000 people who receive my emails, about 20% of them open. So 200 of them open. But over time, let's say I, 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 I let this email uh, report, um, I, I log in again uh, two days later. I see that, hey, in total, 25% open. Right, so I can set up an email to be sent, resent to people who did not open. Which what I can do is that if you do not open my email, the seventy five percent, I'm going to resend you a campaign. And usually, I would try to look at the timing again and try to shift it to a timing that uh, would give me a better um, lead time. Right. So end of the week is not good most of the time. Thursday, Fridays are not good to send emails. Um, Mondays and Tuesdays are typically a better day to send your emails out, all right? So um, reports, insights, and one of my clients asked me, uh, is there any way to know which link they clicked on, right, uh, in my email campaigns? And the answer is yes. You can know specifically which link, which email click on which link. So typically you can do segmentation, uh, marketing, nurturing sequence, and email uh, uh, segmentations of uh, targeted um, outreach, advertising and marketing. Okay, any questions so far? I think we've seen some people join in. Um, 
Any questions so far with regards to what I'm sharing, feel free to edit in uh, the chat. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a very simple, uh, do you see my screen on the report here? Okay, if you don't, just let me know. All right, but uh, this is what we call a resend of email campaign. So uh, this was some time ago, but it's still relevant today. Uh, you can resend the campaigns to people. So for example, my first email campaign, uh, this is called cementation by company emails and uh, personal emails. So what happened is that in my database, there's always people who have company emails. So how do I segment them? Right. So I'll, I'll tell you how we do it. Uh, we segment uh, them as personal emails for any emails with at gmail.com, at yahoo, at hotmail.com, at icloud.com. And um, the rest, we consider them uh, company emails. So what is the best time for you to send an email out to people who are working? Working hours, right? So we sent it at 10, 15 a.m. And for those who are uh, personal emails, the best time is always uh, before working hours, say 7, 38 a.m. or after working hours. So in our case, we actually uh, split them up into two different uh, email blasts at different times, okay? So let's look at the reports um, as well for... So in total, there was 145 emails open, okay? And I can choose to resend this to those who did not open. And typically, it increases my open rates all the way to 35%. All right, so right now, let's talk about five key principles uh, with email marketing. If you have any questions, just let me know, all right? Um, and I'll just, after these five key principles, we'll just uh, take a pause and see whether anyone has any questions, okay? Number one, if you are struggling with email marketing, try to write a question in your subject title and your header, right? Try to ask a question such that, do you know the number one thing that, mo that matters most to your, our customers, right? Whether it's internal or external. Okay, number two, use an active voice. Uh, avoid passive language. Okay, this is uh, an example here. Paula fixed the issue. Um, the passive is the issue was fixed by Paula. Okay, I'll give you the blog post um, at the end of this. And number three, email subject line should not be an afterthought. Okay, uh, subject lines that contain a number uh, tend to have higher open rates. So, uh, for example, like three ways to grow your uh, Facebook social media marketing strategy right? Three ways to get more leads with social media marketing or three ways to get um, more customers, more readers to click your emails, right? So these are things that you can think about. Number four, write for scanners. Uh, a lot of times in my email marketing classes when I teach uh, email marketing, I realize that a lot of us, we uh, tend to write in paragraphs. There are information that we feel that we can't take out and that is not true. I just want you to know that it is possible for you to write for scanners. It, it, it takes great discipline to do it, uh, to be able to do it. And um, it is definitely going to benefit you because people can understand your message better and um, they will uh, consume or they will continue to read on in your emails, okay? My fifth principle for you today is the KISS principle. Keep it short and simple. Um, there is no hard and fast rule with uh, what is right or what is wrong. But um, a, a very good key principle is not more than 100 to 150 words in the body of your email. And at any point of time you like um, to, if you have more things to share, you can always say that, um, click here to read the rest of the story, okay? But there are some things that you really need to be in one email campaign so that uh, people can actually read it, okay? So that's um, something to consider as well. All right, so this is the... This is a blog post. If you'd like to read, uh, there are more points. There's nine tips. I only extracted out uh, three tips. So I'm going to drop it in the chat. All right, you can save it to read later. All right, any questions so far? I understand some of you came in late. So uh, the good news is that this is a Facebook Live, which you can refer to, uh, if I'm not wrong, after the webinar itself as well. Okay, but... If you would like to ask me a question, feel free to find your chat in the Zoom and ask me your questions uh, via the Zoom. If you're on Zoom, 
And for those of you who are on Facebook Live, do we have questions so far on Facebook Live? Or oh, everything is good? All right, seems like there's no questions from Facebook Live. All right, so for those who are joining in, um, all right, if you have any questions about email marketing and why it's so important, uh, let me know. But uh, you know, it's also available on Facebook Live uh, as a replay, I think. So otherwise you can reach out uh, for the link, okay? All right, so let me move on to the next part and we'll talk about security, okay? A lot of times um, government agencies, they're really concerned um, if you're a step board or a government agency, uh, you are concerned about security. I think whether or not we are in government or with, we're non-government, we are private companies, we are concerned about securities. Uh, but one of the biggest mistakes about security is um, we accidentally send the email out as a CC to everyone, whether it's 500 people, 700 people. And when you use email marketing platforms, um, there are many platforms out there to consider. It's a discussion to have uh, in more detail depending on uh, your usage and um, your budget, right? Uh, different platforms have different features as well. Uh, but that this helps to avoid the CC and BCC issue because uh, whenever it's sent out, uh, it will always be a BCC email. Nobody would know who you sent the email to. All right. They will only know who the email is from. All right. So um, reports and notification, uh, if you have a database and you don't protect your database. Anyone can export it. Anyone can have access to your database. It's quite dangerous actually. Um, in PDPA training, uh, one of the things that we uh, learn is that before I send a database out, let's say I have an Excel spreadsheet of 1,000 or 2,000, 5,000 emails, and I send it out to my colleague, I should be password protecting that uh, file and I should send the password in a separate email altogether, just in case both emails go to the wrong or the different shamans, right? Or a different colleague with the same name or uh, one is a client and one is a colleague. So that's uh, some things to deter. But when we do um, leverage on platforms like CRMs or email marketing platforms, they do give you a report or notification that you're, someone is trying to export the database, uh, email database from your system. But a good thing is that you can also do uh, admin editor rights where you choose not to give the access of uh, exporting to every admin, right? Only the super admins can export it. So the editor can only log in to design the emails to campaign it out to segment, but they can't export the entire database, okay? So these are some things to consider. Uh, as I mentioned to you, MailChimp, MailerLite, HubSpot are very good platforms uh, to consider. But um, with MailChimp, they currently do not allow you, if you're new to MailChimp or, uh, yeah, if you're new to MailChimp, they do not allow you to schedule your email campaigns. Uh, you have to be on the paid platform unless you set up your email campaigns in 2000, uh, unless you set up your MailChimp accounts in 2019. Uh, once we hit 1st Gen 2020 and you created your MailChimp account, then um, those accounts actually need a premium account. Okay, right. Next thing to consider is a sales funnel. So what do I mean by sales funnel? A sales funnel um, is something like that, okay? Um, just imagine with me that you have a, a, a session, a seminar, and an event. The, my question for you is how will you follow up with those who signed up? Right, majority of us even today, uh, we had quite a number of signups, but many people do not turn up for the seminar or the event or the, even the webinar. Right, um, today we 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 seldom have seminars or physical events. Or most of it are virtual events. If it is pre-recorded, we could craft our email campaigns to be shared, and for people to click through to watch the webinar again. Or uh, we could actually think of an email sequence to uh, tell them about key points and takeaways from the webinar, right? And then there's an option to view the uh, full webinar on YouTube or Facebook Live, right? So how many of you, as, as those of you who are logged in here on Zoom, uh, if you can actually share with me in the chat, 
whether uh, your name, your um, the company and organization you work from, uh, that would help me to bring in some examples um, for your industry, okay? Otherwise, I'll just give you some examples uh, broadly from uh, my previous um, participant uh, who joined us. So I asked one of my participants, what is a series of emails that you can send to someone when you know that they are interested in your products and services, but they did not, they only inquired with you, they did not purchase with you, right? So I can tell them like fun facts, uh, some uh, things that we did, um, giving back that we did, right? The corporate social responsibility, uh, just to build on that relationship, that trust. So think of what are the kind of uh, email series that you can share with um, your audience, the public, how, what are some of the misconceptions that you can address, right? Recently, um, our videos where we address uh, about misconceptions to social media marketing, some claims of people uh, making some claims of certain things, uh, they do very well because that's a common misconception that many have and that's the common question that many people have behind and at the back of their minds. Right. So when people come through, think of a funnel, when people come through and they get to know you, they are what we call uh, potential uh, customers, right? But once they give you their name and email, they are considered leads. Uh, we call them either cold lead or a warm lead. Okay, some people like to say lukewarm lead, but usually it's a cold lead or a warm lead. When they just inquired, they are a warm lead. But after a day, two days, usually they become a cold lead. Okay, uh, it happens a lot these days. Okay, so think of your email nurturing sequence. All right. Now, there are three ways. Um, earlier in the webinar, I mentioned to you there are three ways to generate your email uh, leads with email marketing platforms. And I'm going to share with you now what are the three ways. Okay, first is a pop up. So on my, on my website, I can integrate a pop up um, for, for now. MailChimp and MailerLite has that feature, okay? And you can edit the website. I'm going to show you an example how it looks like and we use it quite a lot uh, for our websites and our clients' websites uh, if they have an attractive offer. A second is to use sign up from, so for, say for example, today I have a webinar. I actually uh, created a Google form to sign, up, sign you up or let people sign up for the webinar. I should instead use a MailChimp form or MailerLite form so that it integrates with the entire database. It's always updated. Uh, even if to the last minute you sign up and I send an email, you will still receive it. Okay, so sign up forms within the platform updates it. Uh, one of the other things that I like to do is to use this thing called landing pages. Okay, in landing pages, uh, what is it all about? Um, people are confused with landing pages and websites, but landing pages are actually quite different. Landing pages are uh, basically one call to action. It's focused on one call to action. And what happened in that call to action is that in this call to action, uh, you give them enough information to decide on that one call to action. So let's say my call to action is about my email marketing uh, workshop. Uh, and I will tell you like, why is it important? Uh, I will introduce to you a webinar that I did. You can watch it. I'll give you three benefits. Uh, I'll tell you about our program, our upcoming course runs, our testimonials, our course fees, and I'll give you a form to fill up. So about eight different details, right? And that's what we call a landing page. It does not link you out to anything else, but it helps you to make a decision on why you should join us, okay? Why you should join us. So um, these are some things to consider uh, about landing page. Another fourth thing, all right, is how can your websites integrate with platforms like MailChimp or MailerLite or even HubSpot forms? For us, we use HubSpot forms on our website for forms, um, but the pop-up, we actually use um, MailChimp or MailerLite, okay? So that's the fourth way to uh, integrate because my contact forms it will, will sync with my database and I have always have the latest email database to share my email campaigns with, okay? Now, Pop-up forms, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is from our website. We give away free uh, SEO eBooks on our SEO course page. This is like one of the top of performing eBooks uh, 
uh, that we give away. Uh, there are other ways to do your offers. Uh, we, at one point, I think we are still doing this. Uh, we get four videos on uh, social media marketing training, a 40 minute uh, in-depth training. So uh, right now we have so much content, so it adds up to quite a bit, uh, more than 40 minutes now. Okay, everyone okay? Any questions so far? Are there any questions from Facebook? Any questions from those on Zoom? No questions, everybody good? All right, so um, let's move on. Okay, so there's something called a uh, buyer's journey. Anyone heard of a buyer's journey on the internet before? A buyer's journey on the internet? Let's see. Anyone heard of buyer's journey on the internet? All right, so typically there are three stages, awareness, consideration and decision stages. Uh, what are the differences? Uh, the quickest way for me to create brand awareness these days is social media advertising, right? Uh, I could do Google advertising as well. Considerations would be what kind of content you put on uh, the platform that you land them on. Let's say for my social media, people land back in my social media pages or they land on my website or a landing page. What can I give them to help them consider about uh, either my objective can be following us on social media or it can be to inquire about our workshops or our retainer services as an agency. The next thing is when they consider, how can I move them to the decision stage? How can I help them to make a decision, right? So this is something that we need to think about in any marketing that we do. Uh, but the key thing here is um, you need to think about how you can evolve, involve email marketing in this buyer's journey. Right. So uh, another thing to think about is uh, a, a process that people end up having. And sometimes I, I, I realize that I, am, I end up going through this four different stages. I Googled about a question, uh, landed on a company's page, looked through their FAQ, could not find their answer. It directed me to their contact us form. Sometimes it, doesn't even, it wasn't even an easy process to be directed to the contact us form. And that's where it affects the bias journey of not only getting to know you, but considering and deciding on you, right? So a few things to ask yourself. And these days, I do see quite a few good case studies, even for SkillsFuture, um, when we, and TP Gateway, right? When we actually look at the uh, FAQ page, each of the FAQ, uh, most of it, okay, when it comes to TP Gateway platform, has at least one video embedded to address the question that they that we have instead of just written words, title and uh, description answer, right? So these are some things that we can think of that can increase the experience of our customers and our audiences with us, okay? So how can we, uh, how then can we actually improve, sorry, not impose, improve their journey with us, right? So if you're a small organization, I think uh, this is something to really think about. And the next thing that I'd like to share with you is a uh, funnel, okay? Uh, typically, there are, there, are, there are many stages, but earlier I, I shared with you three things, right? Awareness, consideration, and decision, right? But before that, you can think of this uh, two other things, which is how can you generate their interest? How can you increase the engagements and considerations before moving them? Uh, to the decision stage and followed by, um, you know, being your advocate. That's like the ultimate level because when they advocate you, that's when you get more word of mouth, okay? For government agencies, you probably wouldn't um, find that these things are helpful, but I'll just show you that for businesses, you can consider free or paid trial, all right, um, before, they, before they actually decide on you. So these are some things to consider uh, within um, businesses uh, probably where you think about platforms, right? They always give us like a seven day, 14 day, 30 day trial or uh, some even like a two months trial. Why do they do that? It's because they want to create the value uh, for you such that you don't mind paying them, right? Have you had an occasion where you don't mind paying a company? You're like, can you just charge me something? 
and I really don't mind paying you because you've added so much value in my life, right? So these are some things to uh, consider when we talk about marketing, when we talk about sales funnels, um, sales and marketing cycles, right? There's always um, contents that would drive a lot of brand awareness and contents that would be in the interest and understanding, engagements and considerations. And where do you think email marketing falls under in the category? All right, would you like to make a guess in the comments, anybody? Where do you think email marketing falls under in terms of category? Anybody? Feel free to um, make a guess, All right? But typically it is under the interest and consideration stages, these two, all right? So for the free and paid trial are basically your offers. Uh, you could use email marketing to communicate those things um, and purchasing would need at least maybe, uh, you know, to integrate an online payment. So that would probably need to be like a landing page or e-commerce page uh, to integrate it, okay? So something to think about, uh, you know, if you're struggling with kind of what kind of contents uh, to share, these are things that we address uh, more in depth during the workshop. But I want you to think of email campaigns that you have enjoyed receiving. And um, this is uh, one of my favorite um, cartoonists called Tom Fishburne. He does a lot of um, cartoons on Instagram, funny, but yet true. So uh, the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing. So when we create web minutes like this and we add value to you, it's a form of marketing, but we want to help you. And at the end of the day, you will remember uh, Ventus more. You uh, remember me a little bit more, partly due to the content that we have delivered. All right. So with that, right, you have to ask yourself, what is it, what kind of content you want to make? What do your customers want? And you try to make something in between just like what we are doing here. We want to tell you the benefits and importance of email marketing, right? We want to tell you um, uh, why it's essential, right? For government agencies or businesses alike. So how then can we do it? And uh, it's also in the form of content that you want. So try to make something in between, all right? Try to make something in between, okay? So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover today. All right, we are good on time. And before I give you a video and take your Q&A, um, I'd like to share with you that if you'd like to learn more about digital marketing and some of the courses that I conduct at Aventus, um, this effective email marketing course for businesses is one of them. And uh, a lot of times government agencies feel that, um, you know, they can pretty much just uh, continue what they're doing. But actually, I would like to encourage you to think of a strategy. Uh, these are things that are very essential today uh, in the form of how we communicate, how we reach out to our customers, how we basically do our outreach, okay? Uh, I conduct many other courses, but we had to pick two course because of uh, the limitations on the slides. So Instagram marketing, YouTube marketing, there are many other courses if you're interested to find out more, uh, you can inquire with Aventus, okay? So this is a QR code. You can take a screenshot of this slide. Uh, there is also a promo code for you today. Thank you for joining us. This is our way of uh, thank you, you thanking you for joining us and um, giving us your time uh, to see through this webinar. All right, so take a screenshot of this. And um, before we end, I'll give you the Facebook Live video. But um, before we end, I want you to think of how email marketing can be, can integrate your entire digital marketing strategies together. And I have a video for you to watch right now. So... If you are ready or if you have any questions, feel free to just uh, share it in the chat or comments. And um, right now, we'll watch the video, right? And if you don't hear the audio, just let us know. But yeah, um, enjoy the video. It's about three minutes. Hello there. Would you like more leads and sales for your business? If you would like more leads and sales, continue watching this video. One of the most common mistakes many business websites make is the copywriter's focus on features instead of benefits. You're probably wondering, what's the difference? Well, imagine this. At Sky Digital Agency, we're trying to sell our participants our MailChimp course. 
The website copy could probably sound something like this. Learn how to create, design, and schedule your email marketing campaigns with MailChimp. Well, those are features. Rephrasing the same statement as a benefit may sound something like this. MailChimp is an email marketing software that helps business owners automate their email campaigns and grow their sales. Now, grow their sales, that's a benefit. Also, even if you have really good copy on your website, your website may still fail to drive you leads. Why? It's simple. The website lacks an integrated digital marketing strategy. Here's another example. We have made our website SEO friendly and we run weekly Facebook ads that drive us website traffic. On our website, we currently give away a free SEO ebook titled 10 Ways to Rank on Google. When an email is keyed into the pop up, the ebook link is automatically sent to the email for download. Now, imagine if we had an SEO strategy and a monthly Facebook advertising budget, but did not have any freebies or giveaways via a pop up. We literally drive customers to our website, but let our customers slip away as we did not manage to capture our customers' email leads that could possibly allow us as an agency to follow up with email marketing. This is what we mean by an integrated digital marketing strategy. In the example above, it involves integrating three digital components, Facebook advertising, website SEO, and email marketing. Would you like more leads and sales for your business? Start with an integrated digital marketing strategy. Get in touch with Sky Digital Agency for a consultation on your project at 65-9296-3877. Okay, so thank you so much for uh, joining us to the end of the webinar. And I will be sharing the live video with you right now. I think it will be on um, Aventus page for quite a while. Thank you so much for joining me today and I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, at our workshops and also hearing from you. Um, as mentioned to you, uh, the upcoming course run is a face-to-face -face course run. It's on 19th of May and um, the next run is on 15th July, which is an online uh, run for effective email marketing. Uh, it's a one-day workshop uh, for face-to-face -face is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Online uh, is 9.30 to 4.30 uh, you can scan the QR codes and uh, reach out to uh, Mira, all right, directly. If you have any questions, I'm just going to copy her and paste her email here if I can. Oh, okay. Zoom doesn't allow copying here. All right, but uh, yeah, Mira at aventusglobal.edu.sg. All right, so you will drop it in the comments and also uh, in the chat as well. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon.